a female monarch, the veins on the wings are thicker. On a male monarch, the veins are skinnier that you'll see, you know, all the little black lines are skinnier uh -huh. and they have a dot on each side of the wing, like in the rear. So that's how you could tell the difference between a male and a female um, on them, which I didn't know either. So now it's like every time I see a butterfly, I'm like, oh, that's a boy, that's a girl. Yeah, that's neat. And makes the whole naming process fun, you know, because it's yeah, just it like, really oh, fun. yeah. You cataloged how long they were in their chrysalis, you know. Um, it was cool to get to hold them and just let them like walk around and really get to see them up close. Mm. Um, they're just really beautiful animals. They really are. Mm. Um, there are, if your viewers are interested, you know, if you go on YouTube, uh, National Geographic has some really great documentaries out on the flight of the monarchs, um, as well as other people documented their, you know, um, their whole, everything they did, you know, to protect the, the butterflies and things they learned about butterflies. There was one I saw yesterday, it was called The Life of a Monarch Butterfly by Dominique Lalonde films. Um, it's about 15 minutes long. That shows you up close from caterpillar to butterfly. That was really cool. Because, you know, it happened so fast when I saw the butterfly hanging in a J hook and I, you know, I kept checking because I wanted to see them start to go into this chrysalis, you know, how they do it. It, it is such a quick thing when they do it. I missed it every time. Oh. So I had to watch it on a movie. Oh, I was you know, going to say, uh, when you were talking about it, I was like, that's fascinating that you caught all these different um, moments. See wiggle and I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And, you know, if you just like walk inside and walk out, they're in the chrysalis. And it's like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, what's even fascinating about that I found out is it's really kind of like, sounds gross, but like caterpillar soup at that point. Mm -hmm. When they're in that chrysalis, when they first go in and their skin comes off, mm. it's just liquid. Mm. I mean, so they go from this beautiful caterpillar with a skin, right, into this chrysalis where it's like caterpillar soup mm. until this whole transformation takes place. So, I mean, no other creature on this planet does anything that quick mm. you know, and emerges as something else. Yeah. Yeah, it's fascinating to see uh, life on such a tiny level and to be able to see all of these details play out. Um, you know, you mentioned a couple of documentaries and uh, shows to watch that are really interesting. Do you have any other resources that you recommend for somebody who wants to learn more about this? Honestly, I, I got such a great education just from watching those documentaries. You know, I picked ones like National Geographic, like, you know, ones that I thought were really, um, you know, they're really well sourced mm -hmm. and they had doctors and you know, experts on them um, and YouTube videos from uh, people who have been doing this that are more experienced than I am. They have, even some of them have question and answers, you know, on them. Like, I noticed this, what does this mean? what happens, you know, mm. I mean, for whatever reason, sometimes they, um, one of their other, um, things they have going against them is some, there's these little flies apparently that lay eggs in the cocoon, in the chrysalis. And, um, so it's like these parasitic, um, flies and that, that will actually start to eat the caterpillar before it comes out. Um, so they have so many things going against them. So if, you know, I help seven, <laughs> launched us last, last year this year i'm hoping to do more more and more people just you know take the time to do this you could even um, when you're in the field with the milkweed if you see any chrysalis hanging on the plants in the field you could bring them home you know you could just tape the leaves up on the you know on your ceiling <laughs> if you want tape a leaf to the ceiling in a room i mean they don't go anywhere when they first hatch you know and there's no poop or anything like i said once they're in the chrysalis um, if you have screened porch or anything like that, I have a friend that is also, she sees the chrysalis, she brings them home and, and hangs them. You just have to be super careful because if it gets banged around at all, or if it falls, you know, say it hits the floor and is a little misshapen or anything, it damages the, you know, the caterpillar that's inside. So you want to be really careful. Same thing when they're hatching, you know, you don't want to try to touch anything or move anything. Um, because again, if, you know, if the caterpillar falls um, and the wings get 
crushed at all. Um, when they first come out, they'll be misshapen because they're, they're like soaking wet when they come out. And it takes a few hours for them to dry and uncurl and just in that whole process, with that hormone, you know? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, actually, I highly recommend it. I, I never thought I was a bug person. I never, you know, really held bugs. I mean, I held worms, you know, and, uh, and things like that. But, um, I just, I learned so much and I have so much more respect for even the tiniest little beings now, you know, mm -hmm. before you think about stepping on something or just dismissing something, mm -hmm. you know, however little it is, um, it's really important in the grand scheme of things, you know, whether yeah. it's for someone else's food supply or for ours, you know, mm -hmm. they're important. Thank you.